Now on KGW News, a look inside one of Vancouver's most unique homes, how it's made up of shipping containers. Plus, Oregon lawmakers want to let college athletes get paid for their work. This gives each and every student athlete an opportunity to create for themselves. Washington introduces its own vaccine lottery with a long list of prizes. And the Blazers season comes to an end, leaving a lot of questions about the team's future. This might be the best group of people I've been around, but at the same time, um, it was not enough. We begin with breaking news of a police shooting near La Center, Washington. We just learned Washington State troopers were involved. This happened on an I-5 overpass right near the Alene Casino. Catherine Cook is there live with more on the shooting and what led up to it. Catherine? Well, according to Sorry about that, guys. You can see multiple agencies responded to the overpass. This all started around 7.15 tonight. According to WSP, troopers initiated a traffic stop on I-5 near milepost 39, but the car took off, topping speeds of 100 miles an hour. Eventually, the car stopped here on this overpass. That's where WSP says, quote, shots were fired and the driver was hit. A witness told us specifically that it was an officer who fired the gun. Police say the man barricaded himself in his car for a time, refusing to come out, but eventually he did and paramedics took him to the hospital. Troopers say the initial traffic stop came about because the car matched a description of a vehicle that had recently fled during a different traffic stop made by Kelso police. A back live, the shooting is under investigation by the Southwest Washington Independent Investigative Response Team. WSP will not be involved in that investigation. Laurel, back to you. Catherine Cook live near the casino tonight. Thank you, Catherine. Washingtonians now have a chance to win prizes if you're vaccinated. Governor Inslee announced a COVID vaccine lottery today. Starting next week, Washington will have five weekly drawings. The only requirements to qualify, people must be Washington residents and have at least one dose of a COVID vaccine by June 30th. There will be a million dollar grand prize, multiple smaller cash prizes and scholarships for students. There are a lot of non-cash incentives too, like gift certificates and Xboxes. Meanwhile, we checked in today on vaccine progress since Oregon announced its lottery. And this graph compiled by KGW shows the number of new people getting the shot before and after that announcement. Before, it was above 20,000 people per day on some days. After the announcement, it fell to around 12,000 new people a day. And on June 1st, it was just 4,900 new people. The Oregon Health Authority's leader of the vaccine effort said it's really too soon to say the lottery didn't work. I think it's a little early to tell generally, but I think you are, it, the data does not lie in that our overall trend has been decreasing even in the last 12 days. Dave Baden said the state will put out a lot of advertising in the next two weeks to make sure people know they could win a million bucks if they just get the shot. New at 11, college athletes in Oregon are one step closer to getting a piece of the pie. A bill that's now passed the state Senate would allow student athletes to receive cash in exchange for the use of their name and image, among other things. Mike Benner reports. Jaden Grant's moves on the football field have undoubtedly made Oregon State University some money. Now those same moves could put some cash in Grant's pocket. That this is a win for all student athletes. This gives each and every student athlete an opportunity to create for themselves. The Westland native is referring to Oregon Senate Bill 5. Among other things, the bill would allow student athletes to receive pay for use of their name, image, or likeness. It would also allow student athletes to make some money through endorsement deals, merchandising agreements, and appearance fees. I've had so many teammates, current and former, who would have benefited tremendously from those opportunities. And I'm not just talking about having some spare change to spend on themselves. I'm talking about teammates who send the remainder of their scholarship checks to their family every single month. Teammates who have multiple children and cannot venture outside a stipend check to provide for them. We are a sports-driven society. 
Senate President Peter Courtney, along with Senator James Manning Jr., sponsored the bill. They say it's about time student athletes get what's rightfully theirs. This bill is an attempt to recognize the incredible benefit of a student athlete to the overall performance of a university. A university like the U of O. Ducks athletic director Rob Mullins believes student athletes should be able to make a little cash. He's just concerned things are moving too fast. We would need to hire compliance staff in the athletics department, a dedicated attorney in the office of the general counsel, and enter into vendor relationships to ensure a smooth transition. Well, Mullins better get to work because Oregon Senate Bill 5 has already passed the Senate by a vote of 23 to 6. The bill now heads to the House, and if it passes there, it'll land on the governor's desk for her signature, something that's long overdue if you ask Jaden Grant. It is time to challenge the higher authorities of the college sports industry and fight for the rights of the student-athlete. If Oregon Senate Bill 5 is eventually signed into law, Oregon would join a handful of other states in allowing its student-athletes to earn a little compensation. This begs the question, what does the NCAA think about this? Well, it's reportedly open to the idea of its student athletes making a little money off their name, image, and likeness. So the president of the NCAA is meeting with lawmakers in an effort to get something done at the federal level. I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. A curtain call on the season for Damian Lillard, one to remember. A remarkable season for Damian Lillard and the Blazers comes to an end. The team left the court for the final time this season after falling to the Denver Nuggets at home tonight. Orlando's here to break it down for us. Heartbreak for Rip City tonight, Orlando. Yeah, Laurel, this was a disappointing ending to what was a roller coaster of a season. High expectations, then key injuries derailed the team, only to have them finish strong and put themselves in position to make a playoff run. Instead, they were knocked out of the first round for the fourth time in five seasons. Laurel, it was a playoff atmosphere. Biggest home crowd of the season. 10,000 fans inside the Moda Center. Damian Lillard, the recipient of the NBA's Teammate of the Year Award for his play and his leadership on and off the court. Portland got out to a strong start. CJ McCollum aggressive early. He had 21 points slicing and dicing the defense. The Trailblazers were on top despite a 22 point first quarter from Michael Porter Jr. Damian Lillard ending the half with just a nasty step back three to give Portland a seven point lead at the end of the half. Lillard dropped 28 points, 13 assists, putting up the most points in a playoff series in franchise history. The Blazers extended their lead to 14 late in the third quarter. Seven players on the Blazers scored in double figures. But things fell apart in Rip City. Yusuf Nurkic, he got into foul trouble, had to sit. And then the Nuggets, they just went to work. Nikola Jokic leading the way with 36 points. Then Monte Morris at the buzzer. It was a second half collapse by the Trail Blazers. Denver used an 11-0 run to put this game away in the fourth quarter. The Blazers scored just 14 points in the entire quarter, the lowest of the series. The Denver Nuggets win game six, final score 126-115, ending the Blazers season. Regardless of how it ended, you know, we're gonna always have our heads held high and we're gonna uh, have class and, and go about it like you know real warriors. So. We lost, they were the better team. Congratulations to them. And, uh, you know, it's back to the drawing board for us. This might be the best group of people I've been around uh, as far as teammates. Um, but at the same time, um, it was not enough. You know, a lot of things it you know, looks like and, and feels like going to be a change. Yusuf Nurkic, pretty frustrated after the game, mentioning that change could come. And that's what Blazers fans are wondering at this point as they head into the offseason. What type of changes will be made after this season? You told us he couldn't get into foul trouble. It was going to be that trouble for the, the Blazers. That was the biggest key. Yusuf Nurkic is so important to this team. He couldn't help himself. Picked up a few bad fouls and had to sit out. And that's really the turning point in this game. So many people disappointed, but I know true fans are looking forward to next season, and your jacket is lifting my spirits. <laughs> Thank you, Laurel. And that's the bummer for the Trailblazers because you're looking around at the rest of the NBA. You see the Lakers lose. They're out of the playoffs. So it was really wide open, and that's why Damian Lillard so frustrated to see the season end. But they've got to pick things up next year now.
All right, thanks, Orlando. Let's talk about the Timbers and the Thorns. More Timbers and Thorns fans will be allowed to watch matches inside Providence Park soon. The teams announced today stadium capacity will go up to 80% starting June 19th. The Timbers have a match against Sporting Kansas City that day, and the Thorns have a home match the next day. Here's the catch, though. You have to show proof of vaccination if you're 16 and older. You can show your vaccine card, a copy of it, or a picture on your phone. Masks will not be required. A staffing shortage put the Oregon State Psychiatric Hospital in a dire situation. Coming up, how the National Guard is stepping up to help. And get a look at what's inside Multnomah County's largest budget ever. And we had, our, we had our warmest temperatures of the year a couple days ago, but not anymore. In the 80s today, it will be even cooler tomorrow. And while we had thunderstorms in parts of the state today, we've got showers in our forecast for the weekend. In a developing story tonight, the former mayor of Cornelius is still missing. Searchers have been trying to find 76 year old Ralph Brown for nearly three weeks. He left his home in Cornelius on May 16th. Deputies say he was in his car, a blue Nissan Sentra. His family says he has dementia and may not have known where he was going. He just said, um, OK, well, I'm going to go home now. And so my mom tried to talk to him into sitting down and talking through it and he said no um, I'm not going to talk about it and so that's when he got up and left. The Washington County Sheriff's Office says Brown's last known location was Newburgh. They got that information from his cell phone signals but they say he hasn't turned on his phone or used any money since he left home. Right now they're searching around Hess Creek in Newburgh. They say they're especially looking for his car so they can narrow down the search area. Again, it's a blue Nissan Sentra with Oregon license plate 319 KQV with a dent in the front bumper. We have an update on the situation at the Oregon State Hospital. Last week, the hospital made a plea for help from the National Guard. And today the Guard committed 30 members to work at the hospital through July. Hundreds of nurses at the hospital have been taking leave for COVID related reasons. The hospital has been having trouble filling all the shifts. Guard members will start their training next week and they'll work alongside seasoned staff to assist patients. 
The hospital houses people with severe psychiatric illnesses and those charged with crimes, but deemed not mentally competent to stand trial. Multnomah County Commissioners unanimously approved a new budget, and it's a really big one. Here's a look at the numbers. It's a $2.82 billion budget, nearly $3 billion, and that's 37% more money than last year's budget. There is more money coming in, including $78.9 million from the Federal American Rescue Plan and hundreds of millions more from three voter-approved spending measures. COVID-19 response and recovery is getting $60 million to continue vaccination and other programs and also to help businesses. And libraries are also getting a boost, $387 million to renovate seven branches and build a big new library in East County. And homeless services is getting a 50% increase in funding, more than $150 million to create additional shelters and get people into housing and more. It is just an opportunity to be able to change the lives of people in our community. This, this last year has been really tough and there is a lot of need. Chair Kafori applauded voters for passing a homeless services measure a year ago that funds a lot of the program.